In this video, I want to highlight some things that must be in place in a discipleship relationship that's healthy. Number one is confidentiality. It's important for a one-on-one -on -one discipleship to establish confidentiality from the beginning. A disciple must understand that they're able to be open and honest with their discipler and that that information they share stays there. There must be safety in a one-on-one -on -one discipleship relationship. If, if confidentiality is not established, if it is not um, there, if trust is not um, in place, the relationship will always be hindered and there will be a lack of openness. Now, I want you to understand there is one exception to the confidentiality, and that is this. A discipler might have to legally share if the disciplee mentions about suicide or things of this nature. Also, there are times that a disciple will share information with a discipler that senior leadership needs to know. But at all times, always, utmost care will be given that that disciple -y is safe and there will be no gossip that happens. But the disciple must understand that there are very limited times, but it does happen to where a discipler must go to upper leadership with information, maybe for legal purpose or even for moral purposes, that ministry can happen. A discipleship must is confidentiality. A second one is accountability. One-on-one -on -one discipleship is an intentional relationship between two people. And we grow in Christ. The Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. And so there is to be accountability in every discipleship relationship. There should be accountability in the areas of prayer, Bible reading, spiritual goals, um, even into marriage as the discipler challenges the disciplee to um, be a better spouse or to be a better parent. And there's accountability into these areas of their life. Purity, if it's a single person, even if it's a married person, you know, sexual purity, that there is a mental purity, that these types of things are talked about, that there's openness and that there is accountability. Discipleship, for it to be healthy and good, must include accountability. Number three is vulnerability, and that is just being real. And that's a two-way street, both for the discipler and for the disciplee. We must intentionally open ourselves up. If vulnerability is never achieved, if we remain on a surface level with each other, then the impact in our life is very limited, very, very limited. And so God is calling us to be vulnerable, to open wide our hearts, even as scripture says, that we would open up and that we would be able to systematically impart truth into one another's lives as we're open, as we're vulnerable, as we talk about our both failures and our victories. Number four, a discipleship must is prayer. Every one-on-one -on -one discipleship relationship should be praying together. You know, prayer is caught more than it is taught. And so many times our disciplees don't like to pray or don't know how to pray. And it's our job as a discipler to begin to pray with them and begin to teach them how to pray. So we need to gently push our disciples to pray, even out loud. And we begin to pray and intercede with them for specific situations. We share prayer requests. And so prayer and talking to the Lord and, and developing a prayer life becomes a part of a healthy discipleship relationship. Finally, number five is expectations. A healthy discipleship relationship must have clear expectations that we would properly understand from both sides what does this look like and how is it supposed to look like. And so this includes practical things like boundaries, the meeting time, the length that we're together, phone contact outside the relationship, just expectations that we would know what is expected from both parties. And finally, an expectation that I want for every relationship is that we would watch the discipleship video on how to properly end a discipleship relationship.